you see people posting things on social media or you see people on a podium and then you get to have a drink with them later and they're just not the same person. And we're like, you know what? Wouldn't it be nice to just like kind of cut through the BS and just have a candid conversation with your friends? The more we understand about each other and you know as a team member the more you understand about your dentist not only does that help you day to day but it helps you have leverage i'm not okay with the person who knowingly shows up every day and does the wrong thing and thinking like i'm just going to make a lot of money and get away with it because let's face it that's what society has rewarded for the last 30 50 100 years and i would love us to be a part of the solution for that where yep you get to own your life and do it the way you want to but when you're like knowingly showing up and doing it wrong and putting people in harm's way i would like to call you out yeah this is a tale a tale oh yeah a tale of two hygienists so there might be only one bringing the best of dental knowledge and we do it all with ease we cover oral health and screening and preventing gum disease we're gonna do a lot of learning and have a little bit of fun working at the dentist Tale of Two Hygienists. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists podcast, an Endeavor Business Media production. This is episode number 389. I'm your host, Andrew Johnston, and thank you so much for being with us today. We have another great show for you today, a sneak peek even for an upcoming podcast featuring Dr. Pamela Maragliano Munez and Dr. David Rice, both of whom you probably heard on the show before. But now they are teaming up to bring a new roundtable podcast to dentistry, and it's called Dentistry Unmasked, a roundtable podcast. And that is what we're going to talk about today. My hope is that you are able to share this new podcast when it launches next week with your dental team, get your doctors listening to it, maybe listen to it together, or even at different times. Maybe you could use it for some team meeting topics of discussion. Uh, there's lots of things you could do with it, but I would love for everyone to be listening to it. Dentistry has a wide range of topics and their aim is to cover them all in a round table format. And it's always been my belief that many different voices make it more interesting. Everyone has a different point of view. So definitely go check that out when it launches. And then for this podcast next week, we welcome back Michelle Lee from OSAP and her guest, Karen Gregory. They both just got back from their annual conference in Tucson from OSAP. And there's lots of things that they want to share, including some updates with that popular video that we've all had to watch in dental hygiene school, if saliva were red. They tell us about the most trending topics in infection control and infection prevention, or as I learned it, infection prevention and control. Wait, I might have actually still have those ones flipped, but regardless, it's now said using both of those terms. And they explain that a little bit more in next week's episode. In dental news, a huge congratulations to another Michelle that's in many of our lives, we've seen her on social media, we've seen her speak, Michelle Hudson, and she got married over the weekend to the love of her life, Neil Hoover. Uh, she was just, I'm telling you what, the most beautiful bride. Allison and myself are just so happy for them both. We've gotten to know them a little bit better over these last couple of years. And as an adult, I think it's kind of weird to make new friends. I don't know if that's just my personality trait. I'm a little bit introverted, whatever. I also don't know if it's just a because I'm male. I don't feel like men do a very good job of branching out and trying to make new friendships work. But I will tell you that Michelle could not have found a better partner in Neil. He is kind. He is open. He is respectful. He's driven. He's smart. And he's the kind of guy that makes friends with other guys like myself. And that, to me, says something. He is so perfect for her. And I love a good dental wedding. It's interesting that they're both in dentistry, kind of in different parts of dentistry. But I was reading an article the other day and they were discussing, you know, the professions that happen to marry kind of within the profession to each other the most. And dentists were sixth on that list, which I feel like I've always heard it as dentists and hygienists getting married, not so much dentist and dentist. But I mean, wow, sixth. They came after physicians, professors, hospitality managers like bar managers or uh, hotel chain managers, things like that, farmers and ranchers and lawyers. Now, neither Michelle or Neil are dentists, but I think it's interesting to see how things like a profession can be used during the introductory stages of a relationship. And so while I'm feeling all sappy about dental marriage and dental love, I would love to hear of another good dental marriage working out. So please send me an email, andrew at a 2 hygienistcom 
And if you're okay with me reading it on a future episode, just let me know because I think it's pretty cool stuff. And I think that we all need to hear about it. Um, That's all for me for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a review. And with that, here are Dr. Pam and Dr. Rice. A tale of two hygienists. Welcome everyone into the interview portion of the podcast. I am joined today by Dr. Rice, Dr. Pam. Dr. Pam, let me ask you before we say that, we've, every time you've been on our show, it's Dr. Pam and then Dr. Pam Ragliana Munez. What do you want to be known as? Do I even have control over this at this point? <laughs> I feel like Dr. Pam has taken on a life of its own. So it has. I feel like that's just how people know me. And honestly, nobody's willing to just call me Pam. So, I mean, I feel like Dr. Pam's fine. Mm-hmm. But having said that, I am a middle child. So I'll pretty much come in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dr. Rice, do you go by David a lot in, in the industry? Because I hear everyone call you David. I do. I do go by David all the time, but I like this Dr. Pam thing because I feel like you're the next Dr. Phil, just way right. better. Yeah. I mean, so that's the good segue into what we're going to be talking about because she is going to be one of the stars of an upcoming podcast that is going to take over the airwaves in dentistry. Thank you so much, by the way, for both of you making time to do this. I'm really excited about your podcast. I want to let our audience know all about it. Can we talk first inception? So with, we all work for the same company. We talked about doing podcasts. But I feel like it was kind of you two got together and said, hey, we need to do a podcast, Andrew. Where did that come from? God, I feel like there's so much noise in dentistry, like every other profession. Yeah. That, um, well, I don't know, one day Pam and I were talking and it felt like clarity would be a really good thing, but with a little bit of attitude. <laughs> Claritude. Let's call Claritude. <laughs> Yeah. So it was one of those things where, and I think it's pretty common that you see people posting things on social media or you see people on a podium and then you get to have a drink with them later and they're just not the same person. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we're like, you know what, wouldn't it be nice to just like kind of cut through the BS and just have like that kind of conversation that we have with ourselves and each other, you know, that kind of thing when we're, you know, at a conference and you have that like 20 minutes to sit down and grab a a drink or something, and you just kind of have a candid conversation with your friends. And that's kind of what we were hoping for with Dentistry Unmasked. I mean, it's a brilliant concept. I think that we all, you know, we go to the conferences really for those moments, right? It's really not the let's get up on stage and talk. I mean, that's really why we're there. But also like, hey, we need to have these conversations about how to get better, how to connect how to do, you know, deliver better, you know, care to somebody. I feel like though, the hard part that I've had with, with a tail two hygienist is that sometimes the guests aren't the most forthcoming with all that information when they're being recorded. Have you experienced that yet in your recordings? A lot of it. <laughs> so what I love about Pam is Pam, you're like, you you have like the perfect amount of seasoning and dentistry and like knowledge base that it's okay for you to call people out. And I think that's a really important part of Dentistry Unmasked is you can't just say something and get away with it if it's not so. Yeah, I mean, I can't stand when you get like a half a story or you, you know, you learn just enough to not know enough to feel like you need to learn more. Mm -hmm. And so it would be nice when we have our guests and we're having this conversation that you leave and you feel like you had something like, I don't know, like, don't give me like a sip of Red Bull. I want a can, you know? (laughs) So it's like one of those things. Like you just want to feel like you left with something, even if you feel like you left by, you know, having some time to commiserate with friends at the minimum. With the sugar and caffeine rush. I love it. (laughs) No, sugar sugar free. free Uh, Okay, good. So how do you curate your guests? Who are the, I mean, I would imagine you guys have some secret dossier somewhere that has all like the the best speakers that you want to just access. But I mean, in reality, everyone's really busy. So how do you get to these amazing professionals in the industry? You know, maybe one of the advantages of doing this for 29 years is you, we've met, you know, I've met so many people, Pam, I know you've met so many people that are legitimately friends of ours. And to other people, they're like an elusive person that they really want to meet and get to know. And very thankfully, I think between the two of us, our, our little black book of dentistry is, is, is pretty detailed. 
It is. And I feel that it's nice that some of our friends have been willing to make time to do this. Some of our, you know, favorite people, you know, there's some that are a get that we're going to get. So I'm excited about that. And, you know, we're just going to kind of keep it fresh and have a good time. Can we tease some of the names that you've already recorded with? Sure. I mean, there's this guy, Nate Lawson, who knows a thing or two about connecting data research, material science with all the things we actually need to do in our practice and does a pretty darn good job of it. There's this other guy that I always say was one of the, you can count on one hand, the number of people who've been to both my weddings. So you may have heard of somebody, Dr. Brian Novi, maybe. Oh, He's been on this show a few times. He's a, he's a fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. Peter Oster is another guy that, you know, somebody I respect, AACD, all the education in the world you can imagine, and just the greatest guy to talk to and knows how to make everything so relatable, so practical and really objective, which I truly appreciate. What about like dream, like you got some really good people already. Who's on the horizon? Who do, who'd you like make your day if we can get them on the show? We calling people out now. I, love I think that. so. I mean, Are this we? is the time to do that so that they feel obligated to go on your show. No pressure, Lee Brady, but we need you. <laughs> yes, I have uh, no pressure, Pascal Manier, Newton Fall, and Michael Lappa. No problem. <laughs> We're working for you. Oh, I love it. I love it. What about topics? What about, I mean, I feel like you're both very clinically minded, but there was a segment that you also did with like influencers and being influenced and things like that. Like, are there topics that you are super excited about exploring? I, you know, I love the one you just mentioned, actually, the whole influencer, like kind of mini series that we did was amazing because we took people from different backgrounds within dentistry who have influence in totally different lanes and got their take on the difference between a pure influencer and a dentist with influence, people they like, people they maybe are less fond of and why. I thought that was really very, very cool. Yeah. I, the other thing I like about what we have, just to keep it different, is we sort of have each week broken down into a different topic. So we're covering business and dentistry. We're covering clinical, some, you know, a little slice for new dentists or a new grad, um, you know, that kind of thing, you know, and then obviously topics that might be a little bit awkward to discuss. So <laughs> we're thinking, you know, that's something that is an important topic too. So you know, there's really no topic that's off the table. And I, so far it's been a ton of fun. So I'm really thrilled for this to launch. Well, I'm really excited for it too. I think, you know, one of the things that is maybe a little bit taboo, but since we're talking about unmasking, you know, dentistry and the kind of behind the scenes of podcasting is, you know, working with sponsors, working with the relationship with, I mean, all of our audience has heard me read ads for years, you know, they, they know it's a part of it. <laughs> When you're looking at collaborating with brands, how, what are you looking for? How do you want to work with the brand and the podcast? Mm. I love people who, who legitimately, they bring game. So there's no pressure for us to you know, promote something for the sake of promoting it. It's great stuff in and of itself. And it becomes a, a springboard for a conversation we get to have about you know, not only their product or technology or service, but how somebody on the other side of that product tech or service might respond to it. And I think that's been something really cool we've been able to accomplish is to get both sides of an equation and flip a coin and, and hear everybody's thought process, you know, regardless of the fact that a sponsor is, is maybe representing one side of that conversation. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think the other thing that's interesting about that is, you know, so for starters, for those of you that don't know, it's a round table discussion. So we're not just bringing on a guest to tout a product because a sponsor paid for it. That's not at all what we're doing. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We've been very upfront that you're not in charge of the content. We're in charge of the content and we're in charge of the conversation. So it's amazing that our sponsors have trusted us so far to sponsor us. And it's sort of sight unseen, which has been amazing. And they do know that we're bringing on somebody who is a counterpoint to their message. So for example, we covered DSOs for a few weeks and we had a private practitioner coupled with the DSO. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're getting 
you know, you're just having somebody drinking the DSO Kool-Aid and David and I are like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah, sounds great. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, oh, yes, go. We're not doing that. So we're having kind of a more hopefully fruitful, well-rounded discussion and challenging them a little bit. You'll see, and there's some of our episodes. I mean, it's a little awkward, not intentionally, but I mean, it is in a few. I mean, it's a healthy awkwardness and it has to be there. I, I, if we can talk a little bit about some of the ones that I was the most fascinated by was the, and I'm going to get this, these terms wrong, but I feel like it was like an accountant and financial planner, like the, this versus that. What are some of the lessons that you learned as you were doing those interviews? Oh, I, I know the exact episode you're talking about. I love that episode. What I learned was it's obviously a strength to have people coming from, you know, polar opposites to bring you really, really great advice. But those two people need to play well in the sandbox from day one. They need to bring their best game, like stay true to what they believe in, but then ultimately come together and help, you know, me as a dentist because I'm the client. So at some point, compromise needs to be made with my best interest at heart. So the communication skill set and, 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 and the level of communication they need to bring was pretty cool to see because I've done that in other areas, but not necessarily in that arena. The other thing that is important too is a few things is it was very evident that the message from your financial planner and from your accountant could be quite different and could be contradictory. Mm -hmm. So it's important to select your team wisely, but also empower yourself to be knowledgeable about some things. Because if you just rely on one, you might be missing the boat. And, you know, there's so many different, so many accountants and so many financial planners out there. It's hard to even sift through who's good. And so I think you know, it, there's a lot to it. And so it, I left thinking, whoa, making sure you have the right team in place is one of the most important things that we can do. And not being afraid to say the person that I'm working with right now, albeit we get along with each other and maybe we've had a five or a 10 year relationship. If they're the wrong person to have like definitive checklists to say, this is what defines a great accountant or defines a great financial planner. And it I don't know about you, Pam, but it, it definitely made me question some, some of the folks I've done work with in the past and, and where I need to be in the future. Oh, it left me leaving with a lot of questions. And I feel like I've been in dentistry for a while. I've bought my practice nine years ago. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I need maybe a different team. And it had me questioning my choices. So if it had me questioning mine, I'm sure it'll have some of you questioning yours. Well, they, they talked a lot about like, you know, if, if you hire someone based on convenience, if they're right down the road, you know, that's probably not like the best way to evaluate if it's the right fit for you. I, I'm telling you what, like even I'm not a, a business owner and I, I loved that episode. I found so much value in it. And I think one of the things I'm, I want you guys to speak to a little bit here for right now is the, the team members I think we'll still get a lot of value out of a lot of your episodes as well. So what would you envision for, you know, the team members listening in? I think we're going to have content that involves team members. So I'd say so far, I'm not going to lie. It's probably been a little dentistry heavy, but I think that there's some value in listening to that because there's such a divide right now between dentist and their team or dentist and hygienist. And it certainly doesn't hurt anybody to kind of learn the struggle of their enemy, if you will. You know, if you think that your dentist is just cheap and just whatever, you'll probably see that that might be the case. And like, that's fine if it is, I guess. But there may be some struggles and challenges that dental practices endure that you might not be aware of. Mm -hmm. And I think that hopefully, you know, everybody knows that I've been touting, you know, the value of the hygienist for over a decade now. I hope that, you know, that divide will hopefully slowly come down. I'm still hopeful of that. Yeah, I think, you know, adding to that, Pam, the more we understand about each other and, you know, as a team member, the more you understand about your dentist, not only does that help you day to day, but it helps you have leverage. Let's be honest, right? If, if there's ever a time to be a team member in dentistry, we're in it. 
So if you want to be a high level performer and you want, you know, your boss, your team, your dentist to, to know that learning what the better dentists out there across the country, across the world are, are looking for in you, arms you to have that conversation. You know, you, you obviously have to walk your talk, show up and be that person. But if you know exactly who you need to be, that game gets a whole lot easier for you to win. So real quick, there's a video component to this podcast. It's, it's one of these things that I think is both magical and really tough because you have to be on camera and think about how to do the podcasting and run all the gear, the stops, the starts, the recordings. Tell me, how has your experience been doing podcasting now as a podcaster as opposed to like the interviews that you have done before? So I think it's a little bit harder. It's certainly fun. And I could not be more thrilled to be working with David and with you, Andrew. Um, it's awesome just to see you guys anytime. But I would say it's interesting because as an, like an interviewer, if you will, or even as a lecturer who lectures about a topic that's clinical, mm -hmm. there's a level of, I don't know, I guess there's a level of, you know, we're, you're not like opening your soul to people always. And so I think that this is going to be interesting because, you know, we've been given the autonomy to be like, say what you think, you know? So I feel like I've been holding back and trying not to drop any F-bombs or anything like that, <laughs> but, you know, it's for us to be ourselves. And I think it's going to be cool for, you know, those of you who like know us, you know, or have known of us, you'll really get to know us. And I, I'm excited about that because, I mean, I'm not going to speak for myself, but you know, if you've known of David and you're going to get to know him more, you're just going to be so thrilled and you're going to love him as much as I do. You are way too kind. I'm going to say on the really positive side, first, every opportunity I get to hang out with you, Pam, is a great one. Second, Andrew, like you have been so incredible with your guidance and you were like the humblest human I know. So we're yeah, going to edit that out. You've made this That's, that was a mistake. <laughs> Cut, cut. It's so true. It's very you, true. This, it's very true. Hard, you know, I, and I love what you said, Pam. I, it was super vulnerable because for all the speaking and the things that we do, this is new. Mm -hmm. And and I, I feel just like you do. I feel like I'm feeling my way through and there's going to be an evolution to what we do, you know, together as a team with Dentistry Unmasked. But, but hands down, Andrew, you've made this so much easier than it could have been had the two of us been out here like wandering through the forest in the dark with a broken flashlight. No. Okay. Now I'm super uncomfortable now because it looks like I teed that question up just so you can compliment me. And I don't like that, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, so let's, I, I'm, we're going to close here. I want to throw out some contact information. Everyone can search for Dentistry Unmasked Roundtable Podcast on whatever you listen to your, your podcast on. You can also see it. We're going to have it posted on in multiple different places. So if you follow David and Pam on their social media, you'll find the links for it. If you follow Dentistry IQ, it's going to be probably all over the Endeavor website, <laughs> web pages. It'll be everywhere. But I want to say one last question. Is there a topic in dentistry that you've seen on the social medias that is a little bit volatile right now that you can't wait to tackle? Ooh, go for it, Pam. Yes. So, I mean, I feel like it sort of came to a head about what a week or two ago where there was an academic from Harvard, prosthodontist, and I know that we're known to be a little, you know, elitist with our thoughts and the way we practice, um, sort of having us like a self-made debate with a dentist who is very unconventional in how he practices. And when I say unconventional, I'd say your standard dentist wouldn't agree with it. Mm -hmm. So you sort of have these two, you know, different ends of the spectrum, both have crazy huge followings for their own reasons on say Instagram. And they got together and held a absolute show of a debate. Let's put it that way. There's no other way to put it. So sorry, earmuffs, whatever, but that's what it was. Yeah. But I feel like that's what we're seeing now, which I think is really challenging that you see this upper echelon of dentistry that may or may not be real because obviously there is some Photoshop out there in the world. And there's some really crappy dentistry that's getting touted as fantastic dentistry when we know as dental professionals, 
it's absolutely horrific. Like I would never post that if that was my case. Like I'd be embarrassed to have my name on it. And so I'm hoping that as we move along here, that we just make the world a better place and a more real place and a place where you can be okay with being who you are. You know, obviously we want to be better and, you know, the best dentist we can, or maybe you don't, you know, I mean, whatever, but hopefully you can just be okay with who you are and represent it that way. Cause I'm tired of the crap. That was the kindest, gentlest way to describe that exchange. And my take on it is similar to yours, but I'm probably going to be meaner than you are. Um, yes, there's, I think there's a level of dentists out there that's sick and tired of being sick and tired with people doing the wrong thing. And I think there's a difference between maybe not having all the clinical skill sets or business skill sets or leadership skill sets and doing your best. Like I'm okay with that human. But I'm not okay with the person who knowingly shows up every day and does the wrong thing and thinking like, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make a lot of money and get away with it. Because let's face it, that's what society has rewarded for the last 30, 50, 100 years. And I would love us to be a part of the solution for that where, yep, you get to own your life and do it the way you want to. But when you're like knowingly showing up and doing it wrong and putting people in harm's way, I would like to call you out. I don't think that's right. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you both so much for being here. I'm congratulations on the podcast. It's going to be amazing. People are going to want to get to know you even more through your social media channels. How can they find you? So you can find me at Dr. Pamela underscore Maragliano um, on Instagram. I feel like that's the the easiest, but I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn. Don't tweet me. I'm not going to tweet you back. <laughs> Otherwise, those are my main three. Yeah, same. David Rice will get me pretty much anywhere, but at Ignite DDS on Instagram is probably the simplest way to reach me. I love it. Thank you both. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is a tale. A tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one bringing the best of dental knowledge and we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening and preventing gum disease. We're going to do Jenny